Hello students, welcome to the Advanced Materials Advanced Manufacturing Laboratory. We are located at the Technology Center ASU Polytechnic Campus. Today, we are going to take you on a virtual tour of our laboratory and show you the laboratory needs and the instruments we use on a daily basis and what they are used for. In our lab, we study the interactions between nanoparticles and polymers specifically for additive manufacturing. In my hand, you can see a sensor which is volatile organic solvent sensor which we printed in our lab. Today, we will show you the complete procedure of 3D printing a volatile organic solvent sensor which consists different type of organic solvents. The first thing we do as soon as we enter the lab is to take a lab coat, a safety goggle and a pair of gloves of our size. As you can see, one of my colleagues is working on a complicated instrument called rheometer. So, he will explain you what will be doing. Rheology is used to describe and assess the deformation and flow behavior of materials. Flow is flow at different speed and solid can be deformed to a certain extent. Oil, honey, shampoo and hand cream, they all behave differently in terms of their uh, physical behavior. They can be put in an order. On the one side uh, is liquid and on the other side is highly viscous uh, semi-solid substances. Rheology measurement is important for many applications. Uh, for instance, when the viscosity of human blood is high, uh, it usually indicates the, uh, one, the cause of abnormal shaped red blood cell, uh, such as sickle cell ane anemia. Rheology is also essential in terms of material uh, manufacturability and can be used to study the phenomena such as particle jamming during 3D printing. So to, to run a rheology test, uh, the first thing is to program your experimental steps on a provided software. Uh, we will need to set up the shear rate and the temperature uh, and points per decay. And then today I have two different types of samples with different viscosity. As you can see, this one has a, a liquid-like property, while this one has a more solid flowability. So we will test both and compare their uh, rheological behavior. First, we will load the samples between the parallel plates. And during this step, make sure there's no bubbles trapped in between the plates. Okay. And then we will lower this top plate at 100 micrometer gap. And once the gap is totally filled uh, with the material and reaches 100 micrometer gap, we will trim off the excess material so that they won't affect the testing result. So now we can start the test. And as you can see here, uh, the top plate will rotate uh, from a small uh, shear rate from about 0 0.1 uh, to uh, 1000. So here's the result. As you can see, the highlighted line is for the more solid like material it has a much higher viscosity comparing to the more diluted polymer solution uh, so this would help us to study the processability of these two kinds of material during 3d printing 
So here we have a thermogrammetric analysis equipment. Um, so what this machine does is it will analyze what composition you have for each nanoparticle polymer composite. Uh, so we'll first load the sample onto this uh, pen here. And then uh, we will uh, load this pen. So how this machine works is it will increase the temperature of this sample up to 1000 degrees Celsius. And at the same time, it will measure any weight difference. So if you have a material of one polymer, one metal, at different temperatures, but at a lower temperature, the polymer will first degrade, and then you, the weight you measure will be the amount of metals you have. In that way, uh, we will know the exact composition of this sample. So, uh, so right now we will uh, close the furnace here and then fill the chamber with nitrogen and start our experiment uh, up to 1000 degrees. The test has finished and the furnace gradually lowers. Right now it's pretty hot. Um, but you can see that most of the material there is already evaporated, leaving some trace of metals, uh, which we, well, which we can use to determine the composition, the weight percentage of the metal particles inside the composites. Hi guys, this is a TSC instrument. It's a differential scanning calorimetry instrument. It is used to uh, de determine the thermal phase transitions takes place in a polymer. So for that, uh, we heat the polymer sample as well as the reference sample together to maintain the constant temperature throughout the taste. So in some cases, uh, polymer undergoes exothermic or endothermic reactions. So depending on that, we need to uh, try uh, we need to increase or decrease the temperature with the addition or subtraction. Yeah. So that heat flow versus temperature or the thermal transitions versus uh, with, with respect to temperature is determined from this instrument. Sample preparation is a very critical step to obtain an accurate DSC measurements. So in this case, using a tweezer, we place the pan in the blue T0 hermetic lower dye and then we place the sample having uh, uh, approximately less than 10 milligram weight into the pan. Press down the handle of the T0 press to seal the pan and lid together. Uh, then place the sealed DSC pan in the desired pan location inside the heating chamber. One there are two thermocouples, one is for sample pan and one is for reference plan, pan. Then we close the chamber with the lid and we start the procedure. After loading the sample in the chamber, we feed in the information about the sample like material, weight and the heating cycle like the heating rate up to the heating temperature in the software. And then we run the program. Differential scanning calorimetry can be used to measure a number of characteristics properties of polymeric sample. Using this technique, it is possible to observe melting, crystallization, glass transition, as well as the study of oxidation and other chemical reaction takes place in material as a function of temperature. 3D printing or additive manufacturing is the construction of a three-dimensional object from a digital 3D model. It was invented in 1970s. Uh, the printing efficiency and the resolution are still developing. In 3D printing, the nozzle and the printing bed are controlled by a computer with materials being added layer by layer. This printer can do extrusion-based printing meaning it can print polymer melts from a heated nozzle or polymer solution from a syringe. 
we first edit a digital model with the computer, then import the file into the device, telling it what to do. So here we have a solution of nanoparticles and a 3D printed substrate, which uh, having a micro channels. So this solution will be deposited into the micro channels through capillary action. We start by preparing a 10 mg per ml solution of maxine particles in ethanol and using a micro pipette we deposit 2 microliters of this solution into the reservoir of the substrate. After that we can see that this solution gets sucked into the micro channels via capillary effect and gets even distributed into the micro channels. Once the ethanol evaporates we get thin single layer structures of maxine flakes deposited into the microchannels. We can repeat this step to get multiple layers of maxine as per our requirement and the properties desired. Uh, this is a homemade setup for volatile organic compound gas sensing. So in this, we, uh, it has a solution of methanol which we bubble through a specific flow rate depending upon the concentration of molecule required. So uh, this, this uh, VOC molecules are directed toward the sensor. When the VOC molecules get adsorbed on the surface of the sensor, it increases its own total resistance which is recorded here with a multimeter. So that gives us the response to that concentration of methanol uh, vapors. So this is due to the obstruction to the electron flow due to the absorption of the foreign molecules.